hell's everybody doing? I don't, know if he, I don't know if she's in the camera or not. I uh, again can't see chat. I got I got something on to watch while I'm doing this. Oh, uh, cat's right here. Yeah, I don't know how much you can see, but she's sitting right. I got this new chair. Well, it's not new. I moved it from the living room, but I got this chair. Well, I can just sit in it and relax. I don't I don't have to uh, you know tense up my legs to keep from tipping over in the chair and uh, I can put my feet up I can relax and it's it's easier for both of us she can just lay on my legs yeah she can oh yes yeah, she can and uh, I uh, I got a couple I got a couple things I've done. Uh, one of them I'll show you right now. The other one I'll do. I'm basically gonna stay here till I kill a few golems, and uh, but I I can't go any further. That that block right there, it uh, it goes into where the zombie spawners. I'll probably take these out later. Maybe I'll move it further in. I don't know, but like uh, it, it's kind of just cheap and dirty right now. But I've got it where I can just at a push of a button get them all. And uh, I, I I don't know what it is. I next time I next time I make it upstairs I will just reset the modem. I I think it's the modem upstairs. And uh, but uh, the first thing is. When I was doing lunch, uh, the proof was out there. Was on his. They're showing reruns of it on the History Channel, and uh, they had this one where I, I think the footage came from the Border Patrol. It was like an hour-long footage, and uh, it was an hour-long footage, and. It was like I think they said it was like an hour long footage. I think it came from Border Patrol. I think it might have been a stationary camera down by the the border. I might be wrong on it because I got when I turned it on, it was like in the middle of the story or whatever. I'd gone to the bathroom. I missed part of the story, and in their opinion, it was a video that was not meant to be released. And uh, it's one of the very few times I actually sort of agreed with Mick West. Um, it, it was kind of like the gimbal footage or the go fast footage. It was black and white. It was measuring temperature. And this thing here was completely cold. And it had the shape of what looked like a giant rubber duck. Like not a real duck. A rubber duck and it was just flying across, it was flying across the thing and the one guy they go look I'm, I'm not I'm not willing to guess what it is or what it is and I don't know but he said I don't think we can use the shape to rule out the fact that I keep getting this there was a problem with multiplayer it keeps doing I have no idea like if you actually know how I can fix it there's something I can reset if I can piss on a spark plug or some other bullshit, go to my YouTube channel and put it in the video when this comes up. It'll hopefully be up within a week or two, maybe sooner. I think I'm getting caught up. I've been putting out like a couple days worth every day I post, and I am getting caught up. But uh, it's annoying. I And I, I just started this up, and I, I just want to get this done because I'm in the middle of laundry. Oh, Somebody, somebody likes to, yeah. Somebody likes to lick my hand and nestle up against my hand when it, somebody really doesn't care if I get to play. She used to, she used to tackle books, magazines, and the newspaper, I guess, with my mom. And uh, she, she'd been from the from the stories I heard, they were either exaggerated. Some of it I saw when I was here. But some of the stories were either exaggerated or she'd be a lot nicer to me 
Maybe she knows this is expensive, I don't know. But, uh... But no, the, uh... This thing was flying across the screen, and Mick West, when he did his thing, and I, I really don't know, I don't, I don't think he purposely lies. Because a lot of what he says just doesn't make any sense, but I don't think it's necessarily a lie. It's just fucking dumb, dumb speculation. Because uh, he, he's always like, well, what I think is, or what I suppose is, but uh, this one here, he actually thinks it was a, a balloon shaped like that. And it was just being blown by the wind because he said, I, I looked up the weather again. If he's lying, he's lying. Uh, I don't suspect that he is because that would be real easy for someone to look up and check. But he, he said that, uh, you know, he thinks it was just a balloon that was going at wind speed. And then when they got done, I think the reason why they did this is because it's from a government source. And they don't think the government wanted it released, but instead of doing what I mean, I, and I've seen him, I've seen him shit on videos and call it a hoax for far less than this. But when they got done, they go, "Well, until we get some more information, we're not going to call it a hoax." But they did have one person that said, "Well, I don't, I don't think we can, uh, I don't think we can, you know, speculate on it because he goes, some of these are orb shaped, some of them are." Cigar shapes, some of them are tic tac shapes, some of them are uh, saucer shapes, some of them are wings. And he goes, Who's to say? You know, and, and I'm like, Oh my God. You it, know, it's like, Okay. Um, but that one was going on. Then the other thing, and I think this was on Proof Was Out There. And I'm I'm gonna be all over the place. I'm I'm really sorry, but this is kind of bugging me. I just kind of want to get it out. But they were talking about UFO activity near volcanoes, and I think I talked a little bit about it. But and this was an older episode. It was a rerun. But uh, they uh, they were talking about on this documentary I was watching or podcast, whatever it was. I think it was a podcast. I think it was an interview. And this guy, I don't really have anything against him. If I thought he was a nut, I either wouldn't have been doing a podcast on, I wouldn't have watched it. And I would definitely be shitting on the guy. I'm just saying, I don't know. I, I really don't know. He, uh, he could be completely legitimate, sane, as you or I am, maybe even better, I don't know. Um, but the thing that gets me is, you know, it, it, it could be coming from, I think I would even, you know, put a little more weight on Joe Rogan if he did it. And Joe Rogan gets a lot of shit wrong. Uh, I think he asks really good questions. Usually that's where I think he gets into trouble is when he acts like he knows something. As long as he's just asking honest questions and, and leading the people, he I think he does a great job. Where he gets into trouble is when he's trying to act like he knows something. Um, you know, that he he's real big on that DMT and some of that other stuff. And I think he's showing why... Uh, why some of those... Uh, old civilizations, religions, whatever you want to call it, they had rituals and procedures to follow. Because I think they knew that stuff was dangerous if misused. And I, I do think that it has affected his brain in some way, shape, or form. Um, the... Uh, I read these, uh, I, and I didn't read all of them. If I ever get healthy enough, I would like to read more of them. When I was down in Indiana, I read, uh, I think it's the third book in the series. Uh, Carlos Castaneda wrote these books about, uh, and I, I don't, I honestly don't know if they're supposed to, uh, I don't know if they're supposed to be. I wish I knew where I could just shut off the game hosting because I'm not trying to host a game anyways. But it, 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 it this is the first time it's ever done it when I'm actually streaming. But it does it off and on, and I don't. I honestly don't know if it's the game, like maybe maybe something happened at the last update or something. I don't know if it's the game. I don't know if it's the Xbox. I don't know if it's my internet. 
like my modem or maybe it's the internet in the air. Maybe the internet's just having problems today. There's too many people on there. I, I don't know. But it isn't consistent and it's it's here and there. Um, but no, the... Uh, um, He, uh, he basically went to this guy, and he wanted to learn how to, uh, he wanted to kind of learn how this guy's people used medicinal, uh, medicinal medicine, herbs and stuff. And the guy was real cryptic. Well, then what he did was, this guy wouldn't let it go. So this guy started teaching him how to be, I don't know if you want to call him a medicine man. He always referred to it as a man of power. And he tried teaching him, and it didn't work. And this sort of came up with something, uh, and I don't know if it was Graham Hancock or if it was this other guy. I believe... And I can't think of the guy's name. I just did a podcast, I think, on this guy. and uh, But he's from the Gaia Network. I believe he's he's on there. He was just doing an interview. And uh, he... Uh, saw, it was one of those two guys. It was either him or it was uh, Graham Hancock. And they were talking about somebody who uh it was like he was like a medicine man healer shaman something like it was one he's one of these spiritualists and i don't mean that necessarily in a good or bad way it, it just is um and apparently somebody had all of these uh magic mushrooms or whatever you want to call it, hallucinogenics and i guess the guy just took a bunch of them and apparently they didn't do that much to the guy. And then he made the comment, what in the fuck? I just emptied this thing out like twice now. Uh, but they, uh, they didn't really do that much to the guy. And then he made the comment, uh, all the, all these mushrooms do is take me to where I'm, I'm used to being. And it was something in that Carlos Castaneda, but it's called the. If you want to read it, uh, the the third. This is the first one I read, and there's a long story as to why. But it's called Journey to Ishlan. And then I liked it, so I started reading the other books in the series. And my impression, the first two books in the series, he was writing what he was learning, and then in the third book he suddenly realized that what he had thought was wrong. So he started trying to correct the record. And, uh, and then I, and I've, I've read the third book. I think I've read the third book more than I've read all the other books put together. I, that one there I've read far more often because uh, the, the first book, second book, I think I've read books one through five. I think I've got more than five of them, but I've read the first four or the first five books. And uh, what you find out, and I think this was in Journey to Ishlan, he tried teaching him without using the drugs. And when he basically confronts Don Juan about this, Don Juan and Don Hinero are the two... Uh, the two people he deals with and she wants to hold hands and uh, I'm gonna sit up a little bit cuz I can yeah her good girl um But she, uh, he, uh, when he accused him of that, Don Juan basically told him, well, I, I tried to teach you without it, and you couldn't learn. And so, you know, that 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 is something that I've been thinking about when I watch these UFO videos where they're talking like, these people that are using it, uh, they, they're, they think they have to use it all the time. And 
I don't think they realize, according, if you read the Carlos Castaneda books, and again, don't, I, I'm not going to tell you to put a lot of faith into it. I happen to like the books. But when I listen to these people talking about Hiawatha and DMT and these other fucking hallucinogens, I, I started thinking about those Don Juan books. And when you listen to him talk about Don Juan, it sounds like the drug is like the last resort. You know, if you can get there without it, great. And, you know, the funny thing was, is, and in one, and I don't know if this was the third book, the it was either, it was one of the first three books, Don Juan kind of explained something, and I, Carlos didn't seem to register it. And it was really fucking obvious what, but Don Juan was explaining to him that if, uh, you know, if you have a kid who's misbehaving, and literally, if I if I'm remembering it right, this this was pretty much the the upshot of it. But he was letting him know that if you have a kid that is uh, acting uh, acting poorly, you as the parent should never punish them. And it was, and I, this I might be a little foggy on, but uh, he was letting him know, like, like if you had a kid that was stealing or whatever, he goes, you you should do nothing. But he he told him, he goes, you should really get somebody who the kid doesn't know to like beat the living shit out of him and teach him a lesson. And then you, as the parent, will be his friend, his ally, and you will talk to him about it and explain to him well, maybe you shouldn't do this or maybe you shouldn't do that. And, and you know, and, and that's, that's the way he was explaining it. And I don't know if this is the Indian way of doing things because he was, he was either an Indian or he was a Mexican, Don Juan was. And there was this Don Hanero, and I can't remember which book he came into. It was either the second or the third one. And uh, Don Hanero... Uh, would always whenever he would come around there were things he would do and the way the way Carlos would talk is they were just beyond belief kind of like the stuff you see when UFOs are around some of it and uh he uh you know they talked about it while every now and then when Don Hanero would do something Carlos would get sick he would get visibly sick and he started to freak out and he got to where he really didn't like it when Don Hanero came around. He, he didn't like it at all. Well, then what happened was um, he met Don Hanero's, uh, he met Don Hanero's uh, apprentices or whatever you want to call them. And, you know, he was, he was scared to death. He really liked Don Juan. But that, that Don Hanero guy just scared the shit out of him. Well, when he got talking to these guys, they felt the same way about Don Juan. Don Hanero was just so nice. They really appreciated him. Don Juan was the one that scared the shit out of them. And it, it kind of goes, you know, he told them. He didn't seem to register it, but he told them, you know, it's like, yeah, you don't... You know, he didn't do anything to Don or to Carlos. Don Hanero did. And then that way, Don Juan was always there, someone that uh, Carlos felt comfortable talking to, could trust, could rely on. And it kind of went with his way of talking about how to raise kids. And uh, But I, I let somebody I worked with, and I, I'd read this thing often. The, the third book, I think I'd read about ten times. And I was reading it at the one job I had. And uh, I let the one guy, the one guy, he goes, hey, what is that about? And I, I sort of told him, I go, do you want to borrow it when I get done? He goes, yeah, if you don't mind. He goes, "That's." Like, I sort of gave him the cliff notes on it. And I told him, I go, I'm, I'm not reading it. I go, regardless, I go, I, I got reasons for reading it. And I go, you will probably never guess what they are. Um, but I go, it's not going to be what you think. And uh, he, uh, he, he wanted to read it. And I asked him, I go, now what did you think about that? And he said, well, he goes, they just basically turned drug use into a religion. 
And I thought that was a pretty interesting opinion to have. And that that's what he uh, that's what he said. He goes, well, yeah, they just he goes, I could do it. He goes, I could basically make up a religion on how you drink beer. And he goes, and, you know, it, if you did it in such a way, it being a religion, it being something people would strongly follow, he goes, you could probably make alcohol safe or alcohol safe for an alcoholic, maybe, you know, because you'd have the rituals and the protocols and they'd never drink that much. And he said, that that's what it is. It's, it's a way to make drug use safe. And... And that, you know, again, this is all kind of hit with me when you hear these guys talking about, oh, well, DMT and Hiawatha. And it's like, yeah, you know, the, these older religions or civilizations, whatever you want to call them, I think these things developed for good reason to keep people from getting harmed by the drug use. I, I firmly believe that. Okay. We are good there. And so I don't know. But they were talking about these UFOs near volcanoes. And at that, I got into that whole thing just because I wanted to explain, you know, like why I trust and don't trust Joe Rogan, depending on what the subject and the source and everything is. But uh, the... Uh, This is going to be like the horse barn. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm... I don't know if I'm going to build another barn next to it. Or... Uh, I, I don't know. And uh, I might build another barn down here and then put a, a field in between them. I have started a row of... Uh, I've started a row of... Uh, they haven't, none of them have come up, but I started a row of the jungle trees over here. And then I think I'm going to put fences in between them with gates in them. And then this way, uh, mobs will not be able to come this way. Like, they, you know, one, once they get here, they won't be able to go. There. It's just to cordon off the mobs until I get things a little better lit up in here. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I started, and that, that's why I need the wood. I, I basically went as far as I could over the weekend until I started running out of the wood. I was just doing what I did now. I'd cut up a little bit of it, and then I'd go make it. I got that piston thing for the uh, dripstone. Uh, got that made. Oh, I have a looting two sword. One of the... Uh, one of the villagers started selling looting one swords, and I bought two of them and put them together. And I, I just got to get unbreaking and some other stuff. And I don't know when I'm going to get it done, but I am working on getting the uh, this stuff here so that I can... Oh, shit. I'm going to go dump a bunch of this stuff. Uh, I'm getting the... Uh, the horse hide so I can make uh, books. I want to start making, uh, maybe not right away, but as soon as I thin out some of these villagers here, I want to make like one of these rows I want to make uh, for villagers and start uh, start making uh, people who can sell me books and uh, start leveling stuff up. Oh, I'm going to make some torches anyway, so I'll wait. And, uh... But them talking about the UFOs being near volcanoes a lot. Uh, one of those videos, it's a guy from Gaia, he, uh, he made a comment, it was, it was like a whole segment of his, uh, the one interview he did, that, uh, they're, 
there's like a cycle that goes on like every 10, 13,000 years. He was guesstimating. And uh, they, you know, it's a cycle where shit happens and then the next thing you know, mankind's wiped out. And he was, he was speaking that that cycle... It's what we're seeing now. It, it's the global warming, and he and he said it. It's the Earth is heating up because there's something going on with uh, magma, with the uh, with the magma uh, stuff, and he had a name for it. And I I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a gynecologist. I'll take a look, but I'm not a gynecologist, and uh, I'm not a geologist either, and. He, uh, And he was talking about that, and <coughs> today when I saw that proof is out there, and they were talking about uh, these UFOs hanging out near volcanoes. Well, you know, again, any one of these in and itself, in and of itself, on its own, might not make a lot of sense. But you you hear this guy talking about how there's this cycle of destruction based on the magma and the earth's crust and you know the potential of the uh the 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 compass points you know the the magnetic points moving or being altered uh the 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 talk of you know massive upheaval because of the magma displacement and shit moving around and all this and ooh that was not good and you get all that and then you get this one where they're like, oh, well, you know, yeah, you know, what's going on now? That happens every 10, 13,000 years. Uh, there was another guy, and he's from Gaia. He was on a whole different tack. He was talking about how... Uh, um, they, uh, I'm trying to think here. The uh, he basically talked about a friend of his had spent this time with this tribe, and he found out that they had this oral history that they've kept. And he tried to get because that's you know he's someone that likes to document that kind of stuff, and he tried to get them to talk to him, and they wouldn't do it. And he stayed with them for a really long time. And what happened was he stayed with them long enough. I want to say it was like almost 10 years or something like that. But he stayed with them for a long time until they started to trust him. And then uh, he, uh, yeah, I really need that. That's getting fucking annoying, and I have no idea why it's happening. Maybe I'll look it up and see if it's a glitch that's been coming up. I, I don't know. Yeah, we'll let that go.
But he, uh, the guy stayed with him when he was there long enough and they trusted him. They told him this oral history. And I don't believe they, he said they called it Atlantis by name, but they were basically saying that there is this reoccurring cycle where civilizations build up and then they're destroyed. And then after they're destroyed, something else crops up and bing, bang, boom, and away we go. And, uh, I can come up here and do this later. I just... You know, and you hear that, and then you hear this other story on a completely different show, completely unrelated. They're not coordinated, and they're basically talking about they're seeing UFOs at nuclear sites. Now, I think everybody can understand that. I, I, I really do. And the, this thing about the volcanoes is not anything new. I've heard it before, but again, I just saw those other videos. Those were new to me, some of it. And then you find out, it's like, well, maybe, maybe... Maybe these UFOs are coming, keeping an eye on the volcanoes because he basically said that we could have uh, basically, you know, civilization get offset or wiped out or set back. And because he said, you know, the last time this happened where we had the, the weather, where we had the volcano activity, the weather activity, the, ra the rising uh, climate was about... 13,000 years ago during the uh, Younger Dryas. And you know, the thing I'm kind of wondering is maybe every time this happens, things don't get completely wiped out. You know, maybe, maybe not. But it, it could be that this is just the way it is for right now. Ooh, gonna have to go to the bed pretty soon. You know, but that that's the thing. You know, maybe that's why the UFs are, are there at the, the volcanoes. They're monitoring them. Maybe they know that this could be time's up for it. Maybe they're causing it. Who knows? And, but that, that just kind of, and then, you know, the other things that, you know, just kind of popped into my head today. I was a little lightheaded. Uh, but the... Uh, Okay. I'll make some more of these before I go back up. Do, 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 do. Is, you know, and some of this I had heard like before and some of it was new. But there was something my brother was watching, and I ended up, I was interested in it, so I ended up watching it. And uh, they were talking about the Knights Templar. And see, I this is the part I had heard before. 
I had heard about them, you know, the the so-called satanic practices or, or whatever that they had been accused of. And I'd always been told that, yeah, it probably wasn't true, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and then he was watching this thing, and I ended up, I, I ended up, I couldn't, by the time I got into it, it was, it going by the description, it looked like it was almost over. So I found it on online and watched it on YouTube, and it, it, it looked like it was a whole thing. It looked like they had all, because I was thinking there was like two episodes because of the description. I was thinking there was like two episodes, and I was in like the last half hour of the second episode. So I'm like, well, I ain't going to do me any good to watch it. I'll see if I can find it online, you know. And uh, I did. I watched it. And turns out there's like four episodes. There were two more episodes on that day. But I got to watch it from the beginning, and I think I watched damn near all of it. And, uh, well, what happened was they showed some of the Templar buildings. Yes, they did. And uh, they showed them. And I'm not going to lie, I'm I'm not a prude, I'm not offended, but, and I don't think they deserved what happened to them. I, you know, I don't, maybe I'm wrong, but it, you know, like what I'm understanding of it, they did not deserve what had happened because it sounds like the only reason they got accused of what they got accused of was because there was a king that owed them a shitload of money. And if you understand how things work back then, the, uh, the royalty was used to doing that. They, you know, they were like Donald Trump. You know, they'd, they'd, uh, they'd, they take a loan out or they take services, and then they just wouldn't want to pay. You know, it, you know, and that, and that, you know, it's a very Trumpian thing to do. You know, they just, you know, oh, yeah, the money I owe you. What money do I owe you? You're a fucking peasant. I don't have to fucking pay you. I'm a giant piece of shit. You know. Uh, and the uh, so it really you know everything I had seen before it really looks like he made all this shit up and and I'm gonna be completely honest with you I, I got this group that I play with on Ebony uh, and I don't know which it is but it's one of those two uh, they're the the guy that leads my my team, uh, and, and again I'm I really don't want to advertise it until things clear up because there, there's just shit going on. Like I'm sorry they they've got a thing in there where they uh, they agree to abide by certain rules for the server, and uh, the guy who runs mine, you know, he got attacked. And, and it's one of the shit bags that's been stirring stuff up. Like, they, uh, this group stirred, so, like, right when I joined this group, and I did not start playing this game until, uh, like a month or so after my ankle got broke. I was bedridden most of the time, and I didn't, I, I didn't have my tablet, I didn't have a whole bunch of shit, and I'm just like, well, I'll, uh, I'd seen advertisements for it, and I'm like, well, I can play that right here in bed. And, uh, and that's just the way to go. So I did that. And I actually enjoy the game. It's a lot of fun. And uh, the... The, uh, they were showing some of the, the architects, some of the stuff that the Templars had built. We're talking about stuff that is built into the walls, stuff to built on the inside. And, you know, they had pentagrams in windows. Not, not the Jewish Star of David. These were like fucking pentagrams. And, well, one thing, and th this has been a thing, and, and I've heard... I've heard what I think are credible arguments, whether they're, I don't think there's hardcore proof, but I've heard credible arguments that the Vatican is hiding a lot of history. There's things that they snap up and don't tell anybody. Like you take the, the Fatima children 
Uh, three so-called predictions were given to those children by uh, by the Virgin Mary. Well, the Vatican kept one of them under wraps. The other two, I think, I think were made public after they had come to pass. But the third one, I don't think they've released, or at least they don't release them until after they've passed. Well, what are they hiding? You know, what what are they absolutely hiding? And uh, I'm just going to leave that for now because what I want to do is I want to go and put a roof in there and some other stuff. And so I'm not going to put, because I can basically go back up and get in that way uh, to it. And, uh, and I might do it now, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go get myself a new axe because... This one here, I've got as Smite 4 and Efficiency 3, and I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to go, I think I'm going to work on making a new uh, Smite 4 Axe and another Efficiency, another Smite 4 Efficiency 3, because then I can put those together and I'll get Smite 4 and uh, Efficiency 4. Or and get smite five and efficiency four. And uh, and that and that I was kind of wondering because like here's the thing and and anybody that tells you absolute I I don't think is being honest with you but you take a look at the Templars and they uh, they clearly were getting special treatment. My understanding is what I'm about to tell you is definitely factual. Uh, there was a time when banks were not allowed to charge like interest on loans or anything like that it wasn't legal church law and they were the only ones that were allowed to do it the templars got around it because my understanding is they uh you know and so they had a leg up on the banks how would that play today if you know you were going to have some religious nut you know basically making the banks poor you know, they'd probably put them, you know, on a cross and crucify them like they did Jesus. And uh, they, uh, they, uh, what they did do was they charged rent. And the Templars had this real sweet setup where you would give them your valuables and they would give you an encrypted note that only the Templars could read. And you could take that to any Templar shop, give it to them. They would know how much you had with the Templars. You told them, like, you'd, you'd take that note, you'd go, it'd be like your bank, and this thing was your account number. Like, you go into your bank now and you give them a card or you give them your account number, and then that you can basically access your funds in the bank. And uh, what happened was, uh, what happened was they uh, they uh, they would then give you your money and they would in encrypt you a new chit, and it would be like and it would be like your bank statement. You know, they would they'd give you a new thing and like if you had say ten thousand dollars and you took two thousand dollars out they would give you a new one saying that you had eight thousand dollars well they charged you rent for that was how they got paid for providing this service they charged you rent for the stuff you had with them it wasn't interest it was rent but the banks weren't allowed to do it it was a, as far as my understanding is that was a sole thing 
for the uh, Templars. And they became very, very wealthy because they were the only game in town. Banks were not allowed to do that. So, you know, if the banks couldn't make money on it, you can imagine they probably didn't do it. So they were, they were like the modern-day ATM back then or the modern-day banking system because the other ones couldn't charge you interest. They couldn't charge you rent like the Templars. And th this is after they supposedly were protecting that road in Jer Jerusalem. The uh, speculation is that they were actually not really protecting the road, but they were digging for King Solomon's temple. And then at some point, they just picked up, came home, and they were they were given all this special treatment by the church. So you got to kind of ask yourself, well, maybe maybe those stories are true, because you got something. You got to have something to explain why they were granted all these powers to where they started getting hated by the church, or not the church, but the the uh, royalty. Because again, the way things normally did back then, you know, if you if you borrowed money from people that weren't royalty or somebody under your station, which you would think knights would be, you know, you you would think the knights would be answerable to the crown, not the not the other way around. And uh, but this guy owed them a shitload of money. This I believe is factually true too, uh, not a theory. But if you owed you know, these guys a shitload of money, you think that the royalty would just do what they do to everybody else, like what Donald Trump does to, you know, peons. Fuck you. Yeah, I owe you money. What are you going to do about it? Well, you know, these guys had so much pull with the church, and the church, you look at the stuff the Roman Catholic Church did back then, the civil wars they created, the people they had executed, Spanish Inquisition, that whole thing. Um, obviously he was under the impression that he couldn't tell them to go fuck themselves. So what he did was, and th this is the thing, and I, and I know I brought this up before, but if you do not know where Friday the thir 13th comes from, why it's such a bad day, Friday the 13th is the date. It was a Friday and it was the 13th. That was the day that this, uh, I think he was like French nobility, I don't even know if he was the king. He he might have just been a high-ranking guy. But this was the day that he orchestrated the plot to kill the fucking Templars. Uh, I don't don't ask me what year it was, but it was a Friday the 13th. That's why that is such a bad day. Because that that was when the Templars were wiped out. And one speculation uh and there's there's many because the Templars disappeared, but there's no evidence that their loot was ever found. You know, the money they had from all the stuff they did, like the stuff that they might have found at Solomon's Temple, the money that they made charging rent on, on the banking stuff. Uh, their... Okay, I gotta find my axe. Give me a second. Okay, that's smite three. Oh, okay, yes. I'm gonna get one of these. Uh... Yes. Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me. I need one more emerald.
But, you know, that money was never found. And they had to have banking money. They, they absolutely had to have banking money for the rent that they charged. And, uh... Yeah, I forgot about these. Uh, I really did. Um, I kind of want, I think I want uh, uh, Silk Touch, the thing that breaks off the stuff. I don't know if I want Fortune on this, but I'm going to have a Fortune Axe now. I think it's silk touch, but the one that the one that breaks the stuff off. But I got unbreaking fortune two and efficiency three, so. But now the uh, and it it seemed unlikely that the the no the noble noble guy would get to rip off the bank. Now maybe he paid the bank and maybe he paid the church under the table. I don't know. Can't speak to that. But uh, that money never turned up. And they, you know, they, yeah, they got a lot of them, but there were a lot of them that just sort of vanished. And my favorite theory on what happened, and there's there's plenty of theories. There's, I think there might actually be more theories to what happened to them than to the theories on uh, the JFK assassination. And... Uh, my favorite one is that they basically went to Switzerland and created the modern day Swiss people because, you know, they, they said that, you know, before the Templars disappeared, they were mostly a agrarian country, you know, not overly aggressive or competent at fighting its neighbors. And then at some point after the Templars disappeared, they were like never defeated again in their home country. Uh, you take like uh, World War II, nobody. The Ger I mean, you think about the horrible shit that Germany did in World War II. They did not invade Switzerland. Uh, Switzerland, they, they had this tunnel that you could actually go through and... They were considered neutral soil. They, they were considered neutral soil. And uh, the, the, the big fear was if, uh, if anybody invaded them, they would blow the tunnels. And then Germany would not, would not have that, because they did, they used it. They relied on it. It was open to everybody. They were Switzerland was neutral during World War II, and the whole the whole idea of taking over Switzerland was uh, Germany would have wanted a fast way to get through the mountain over to the European countries on the other side. Well, apparently Swiss had that tunnel, that train tunnel, rigged, and if they blew it, it would bring the whole thing down, and then. Germany would not even get the limited use that they had of it. They would have to go around because they couldn't go over the mountain back then, or at least not in mass. And they would have to go around, which would basically, they felt, make the war harder to win, if not impossible. And, uh, and then the other thing is you look at the banking that they have. They suddenly became really good at encryption and all. Thing, you know, there were there were a lot of similarities between Switzerland after the Templars disappeared and the Templars when they existed. That's my and again, I don't know, um, but that's my favorite theory as to that. But the thing that gets me is um, when you look at what is going on. And you hear these stories, and again, I, that one really blew me away because I had heard these stories, and I always, I had always, it had always been speculated. I always kind of took it that these uh, these stories were just that stories. 
you know they were they were just that stories but when i saw the architecture and i'm just like oh god maybe you know i again i'm not saying they were or they weren't i don't know but i'm just saying when i saw some of the stuff that was built i mean built into their buildings not not a poster that somebody put up it was actual the architecture of the building in and out in the building like into the bill into the building itself and inside the building statues and that i'm like well you know I can see how they might have thought that back then. I honestly feel how they may have thought that back then. And the thing that gets me is how much, and again, this is why I said, you know, you really need to get into this uh, megalithic stuff and the ancient sites because if they get to the bottom of the whole UFO thing, are we going to find out that most of what we know in history and most of what we know about religion is all wrong? You know, and, and again, that that uh, uh, Da Vinci Code, they talk about it at the beginning of that movie. And again, I, again I've, I've seen that movie a whole bunch of times. Well, now that I'm getting back into this UFO thing when I was watching, it just kind of hit home. It's like, well, yeah, you know, the devil's, you know, because he, he threw these images up. Well, what is this? And they uh, they said, oh, well, that's the KKK. And he showed you that it was an old sect of Christians, priests. And they were wearing the white hoods. And, you know, he was showing you that, you know, the swastika was something that was good luck. It was beneficial. It was part of an older uh, culture, religion, whatever you want to call it. And the, the you know, the Nazis kind of, bastardized it you know I, and I think you can actually flip it and it's actually the good one the, the Nazi swastika is the bad one and uh, the uh, the other thing was they, they put this up and they're like oh that's the devil's pitchfork and he goes oh you know Poseidon would really you know what if because you know the the Jews and, and this is and I'm being I'm going to harp on this a little bit. The Catholic Church and the Muslim religion are basically cult-like offshoots of the Jewish faith. Uh, you know, you you had the one you had the one Jewish guy. He's pictured in the Bible. Whether how accurate it is I don't know because you got to understand the Bible is not a history book. Um, it, it's a mythology book, but that doesn't mean there isn't truth in it. It's just it should not be treated like a history book. Um, should not be treated like the Encyclopedia Britannica. But the story is, you, I think it's Isaac and Ishmael or something like that. Um, they were half brothers. Well, you know, you had the one guy. He supposedly really loved his wife, but she couldn't give him a kid, so he banged some other chick. And produced a Muslim, or what would become a Muslim, a proto-Muslim. And then after that kid was born, and he was raising it like it was his kid, well then his wife shit out a kid for him. So he really didn't have time for, and you know, and really this is real similar if you watch the Luke Cage story when it was when I had Netflix and I was watching the Luke Cage story, uh, it was the same kind of thing there. You know, this guy he. Uh, he knocked up one of the women at his church, had a kid, and then his wife was able to have a kid. So she made him, you know, like when, when she couldn't give him a kid, she kind of let it slide. Well, then when she shit out that kid, she made him get rid of the, the, the you know, the baby mama and the baby, you know, his little side piece, had to get rid of it. Well, that shit was going on in the Bible. And uh, they... Uh, and that, that's how the Muslim faith started. Not, you know, basically you had a, 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 a stepson that was raised, didn't like the fact that his younger brother was getting better treatment, so he went and created his own little cult leading that became the Muslim faith. And, you know, make of that what you will, but them, them are the facts around it. You can't really argue that. Um, now, maybe he did have divine inspiration, but that that's the heart of the story. You know, his... His daddy fathered him, and then when he had a kid with his proper wife, he wiped his dick on the curtain, left, and then he grew up and, you know, out of spite, created kind of a religious thing. 
And, you know, and it, it is one of the biggest, it's, it's, I don't know, I, I think you could maybe say it's the second biggest breeder of terrorism after Christianity, because uh, Christianity's breeded a lot of terrorism over the years, too. But, uh, you know, that, that's what we got. And the, uh, uh, you know, that, that's what we got going on with this shit. And... So I don't know. It it's it's an interesting conundrum. It really is. Usually what I do is I look for whichever one can get me all the way to the top. And I got like four or five choices. But none of these can go and that cause that stuff grows over time. This one here, I can pretty much get up here. I'm wondering is like because again you know they, they got this special treatment what if anything if the rumors are true what on earth did the Templars find what what did they find that gave them all that special attention they were probably feared by the church they were hated by the uh, hated by the uh, religion or the uh, uh, monarchy you know what the hell what the hell did he they learn that put them in that position and then again when uh, they basically and again I think this is what's going on in that game on Ebony uh, either you know because I originally had thought that all that stuff was made up when I was looking at the architecture I go well, maybe there's a little something to it but again I would say that whatever happened happened because of what they found in Jerusalem, allegedly at the King Solomon's uh, tomb or whatever library, uh, what did they find? I am waiting. There we go. I need four of these. I, I'll take them out of the chest if I have to, but I really would like to get four of them out of here so I can put another... Uh, big old tree up and uh three because uh you know again we you know, they, they said the thing where they showed it, oh, well, that's the devil's pitchfork. No, it's Poseidon's pitchfork. Well, what if there is so much of this stuff that they have in uh, modern-day religion that is just completely bastardized from what it should be? Uh, you know, you take, and this was on, a, I think this was on Ancient Aliens, or it was on a podcast or documentary much like it. But uh, they... Uh, they were talking, and again, they, they have this, uh, I think he's a rabbi and a Jewish scholar that does a lot for the History Channel. And he sat there and made comments like, oh, well, you know, the the Jewish faith, you know, they the, in the Bible, they talk about non-human intelligences. You know, and, and I think this is very relevant to what's going on at Skinwalker Ranch. Oh, yeah, they, they these non-human intelligences and blah, 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 and this and that. And uh, what if we're going to find out that all these religions, all these modern-day religions are just bullshit that we've been fed? What are we going to do if we find out that the, the Catholic Church 
you know, actually killed off somebody that was sent here by aliens to kind of lead us, shepherd, you know, Jesus. He's a good guy teaching, you know, whatever was going on, but he was just a normal guy that was sent here to lead us. Uh, he was here to help us with peace, love, and understanding. And they fucking put him on a cross, stabbed him with a spear, and let him bleed to death. And then they took over his religion, and they just lied and bastardized history and, and taught us what we now believe. Uh, and, they, you know, they, and they didn't want anybody digging. Oh, the earth is only 6,000 years old, nothing before us, because they didn't want us to find out what was before I, I got a sneaking suspicion that we're going to find out. You know, we're going to find out that there was no Satan. They just didn't want people worshiping Poseidon. They didn't want people seeking Poseidon out. You know, they didn't want a f people following his footsteps. Uh, what if witchcraft is an evil that they're just in tune with Mother Nature and, you know, you know they like being nude. They like having sex. They like women in charge. What what if we're gonna find out that there's all this stuff that we've been lied to by the church over the years? Uh, and, and I mean it. And again, I I have no idea. But it's like the the more of this you see, it at least raises at least for me it raises a question. But like I said. Some of this stuff that's out there, it's just piece after piece after piece, and it almost feels like they're fitting into a puzzle. I don't know. I'm having trouble hearing. Can you say that again? Fucking, I, I, I'm not even, I, I never said the magic word to wake her up. I have no idea what's going on. Like I said, it, I've had that thing for over 10 years. I think it's just acting up. Well, I think we've had a pretty good stream. I don't think I rambled too much. I think it was kind of coherent. Uh, and she's fucking beeping again. Um, but, uh, yeah, maybe that's why this thing, maybe it's, uh, maybe Alexa, maybe I'll turn Alexa off and see if that thing stopped. Maybe Alexa's fucking it up. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to let everybody go. Uh, uh, Nicole Wallace is on with Deadline White House. And... I'm kind of making this up because I, I haven't seen uh, Full Metal Jacket in a while. But MSNBC and Nicole Wallace are telling us how uh, Israel is going to defeat the evil Hamas with the help of God and a few Marines. So uh, peace out and I hope everybody has a great day.